Hi everyone, my name is Bogdan and I'm going to be talking to you about Tanky today. This is Tanky. Um, you guys asked a bunch of questions about Tanky and I'm going to try to cover them really quickly today. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, the first question is, how did the idea for Tanky came about or how did we get the idea to build a drone and why is it shaped the way it is? So, um, we decided to get into FPV flying and racing when we moved to the high desert of California. We are next to Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, we moved to a house that's completely off the grid. Uh, it has solar panels and it's completely disconnected from everything else. And obviously the road to here is completely off-road terrain. We have to have a 4x4 truck to, to get here. Uh, so we had to give up on our fast motorcycles and cars that I had and my wife Yuki had. So instead we decided to get into another hobby and that's FPV racing. And we've been doing that since, or FPV flying I should say, because we don't race that much. Um, and um, we've been doing that since 2014. And in 2015, at the end of 2015, I decided to build Tanky and we've been working on it since then. Tanky wasn't actually my very first design. My very, very first, well, my very first drone that I built is right here. It's scavenged for parts, as you can see, but it, it was an H drone. But my very first drone that I built myself, that I designed from scratch, uh, was the Foldy Quad, named so because its arms can be folded down. Uh, if you remove uh, little bolts right here, you could fold down its, uh, there you go, you can fold down its arms. And um, as you can see from the very beginning, I had this idea of an X-shaped drone before X-shaped drones accept, uh, became accepted and popular. Um, and that's because an X-shaped drone is a simplest type of drone, and I believe that simplicity is elegant. Um, it's a drone that has everything it needs and nothing it doesn't. Um, so we kept working on it, and eventually we came up with a uh, Tinky drone. And Tanky Drone is shaped like an axe because, like I said, it's very elegant, it's very simple, but also because it's very aerodynamic, the X shape is. And that's because most drones, uh, most racing drones or high speed FPV drones, do not fly like most people think they do. They don't fly like this. They actually lean in into the, um, into the flight and they really lean forward when they're flying. Some FPV racers lean as much as almost 90 degrees in corners. So when you lean that much, you can see, here I'll pull my H drone for comparison. So when they're like that, it looks like this one will be aerodyna more aerodynamic. But when you lean them forward by 45 to 50 degrees, you can see how Tinky becomes a lot smaller in terms of its forward facing profile, while the H drone becomes almost like a wing that's pointed downwards, creating downforce and pushing your drone downwards. So on, on, by contrast, Tanky has this shape right here, which gives it actually just a little bit of lift, which makes it more efficient while, while flying forward at high speed. So that's why the shape is the way it is, and we have a lot more graphics and such on uh, our Kickstarter that you can look at. So let's see, now question number two. Um, how can it be so inexpensive? Um, well, there's, there's three types of drones right now on the market. On a very, very base level, you have the, um, like your toy drones, and the stuff that you find in the stores for like $80 or so. Uh, as you go up, you get the uh, racing drones and the kind of flying around FPV drones, such as Tanky, which range from anywhere between a few hundred dollars to like seven, eight hundred dollars. And then you got your expensive camera ships, the camera FPV drone um, or flying drones, like the DJI Phantom and the DJI Inspire. Uh, those are very expensive because they have a ton of electronics for stability and such, and they have very expensive cameras mounted on them. Um, uh, Tanky drone, uh, the price that we're uh, putting it on Kickstarter for is roughly how much it would cost you if you were to build one yourself, if you already had all the tools, experience, and all the other stuff, and you were just buying the, the strictly parts for Tanky Drone, that's how much it would cost you. Uh, we can offer it for that price because we're just getting started. We're a small company. We have no employees other than ourselves, 
and we can afford it. Uh, later on, when we become a, hopefully a larger company and start producing drones uh, on a larger scale, it'll probably have to be a little bit more expensive because we'll have to pay for things like having employees and things like that. But at this point, we have the opportunity to offer it at a price that allows anyone to enter into the hobby, and um, we hope to get more people into this hobby. Um, let's see, next question. What is the actual top speed of Tinky Joe? We measured it at uh, 102 miles an hour. Now that's a calculation, and that's our fastest run. Um, eventually, for production purposes, we are hoping to actually beat that. Um, but our goal is to get 100 miles an hour. Um, we hope to improve upon our top speed by lightening it a little bit and um, improving the aerodynamics just a little bit in a few places. But other than that, 100 miles an hour is our goal. And 102 is what we hit so far. So we met our goal, but we want to be able to meet it consistently. Let's see. How stable and easy is it to control? Um, I guess flying drones is kind of like riding a bicycle. When you start doing it at first, it seems almost impossible. But then once it clicks in your brain on how to do it, it's really easy. Uh, Tinky is really easy to fly in stabilized mode. Stabilized mode is when, um, I have my controller right here. I don't know if you can see it. But when you push the stick forward on the controller, Tanky will lean forward. When you let go of the stick, it will stabilize and level out. Um, that's the mode that you would want to learn how to fly in for line of sight flying and such. But for, um, for FPV flying, you really want to master what's called manual mode or acrobatics mode. In that mode, what happens is when you push the stick forward, Tanky will start leaning forward. But when you let go of the stick, it will just stay there. And, to str uh, and it'll just keep flying forward. And to straighten out Tanky, you would have to pull back on the stick, which will start pulling it like this, and at some point, as soon as it's level, you will let go. Now, it sounds complicated, but in fact, you want to learn that kind of mode, because that's what allows you to do all those cool maneuvers and dive down cliffs and go between trees and stuff like that, especially for FPV flying. And that's the kind of stuff I was talking about when I was saying it's kind of like riding a bicycle. It sounds really complicated, but it is, in fact, really easy once you get a hang of it. It's, it's really not hard at all. Um, to learn how to fly tanky, it would take about a few hours on a nice grassy field for flying line of sight. And for FPV flying, well, I'm still, I'm still learning how to do it really awesome, but, you know, it's something that you can start doing well in a couple of days and then spend the rest of your life perfecting it. Um, let's see, what's the next question? What is the range on Tinky uh, in both of distance and time? Um, in terms of distance, uh, it's about one and a half miles for the video signal and the control signal goes a little bit further, uh, all the way to two miles. Um, but really what you're going to lose first is the video signal and that's about one and a half miles. We're using a 5.8 gig um, FPV system for its small compact size. Now keep in mind that FAA wants you to stay within line of sight at all times even if you are flying FPV. So, you know, line of sight, I lose sight of Tanky after about 500 feet. So, And most pilots that I know of fly around a 500 feet area around themselves. And also keep in mind all the safety uh, tips like never fly above people, don't really fly too far away, don't fly above crowds, and fly in designated areas, um, and never over forest fires, which is a problem in California. Um, oh, and in terms of, let's see, in terms of time, and that also ties in into question number eight in terms of battery life, um, Tinky is limited by its battery life. It gets about three minutes of really fast flying when you're flying forward at you know those hundred mile an hour speeds or when you're diving down and flipping and such and it can do about 10 minutes of hovering and cruising around so if you're gonna go on a leisurely kind of like flying around time um, you'll get 10 minutes out of it so it really depends on how fast you're flying uh, let's see what the next question is um, uh, how long does it take to charge the batteries? Okay, that's an interesting question. Uh, we have 
uh, we use these kinds of batteries. These uh, 1,000 milliamp, uh, one amp hour packs. They're both 14.4 uh, volts uh, 4S batteries. And um, as you can see, they're a little bit different, even though they're the same capacity. Uh, this battery has much thicker leads than this battery. So this battery takes about uh, 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes to charge on our charger because we charge it at uh, one amp. Um, this battery, on the other hand, we can charge all the way up to five amps. So this can be recharged in under uh, five minutes if you wanted to. Now, of course, if you want your batteries to last for a long time, you should charge them slower. So if you have the time, you know, charge them slower. It's not a big deal. Um, let's see what the next question is. And I was just going to say about the battery life. When you go to the park, these batteries are not expensive. They're about $15 each. Um, so over time, you will collect like a bunch of them. So when you go to the park to fly, you will just bring 10 packs or so with you, and you can fly all day. Um, uh, do you expect to meet all your financial goals on Kickstarter, and are you looking for elsewhere for investors? Um, well, if you're an investor, we would love to talk to you. Uh, we would love to make Tanky uh, an amazing company, and uh, definitely get in touch with us if you want to invest into Tanky. But yeah, we are hoping to meet all our financial goals on Kickstarter. Um, in fact, we don't really, it's not so much that we need the money, we actually need the units. Because the minimum number of units that we can produce of Tanky is 500 due to minimum order quantities on the ESCs, motors, and some of the other components, and on the plastics that we have to, we have to make. So we need the 500 units. Um, but we, and we are going pretty well on Kickstarter. We are, I think, last time I checked, up to 50 backers at the moment. Um, so that's exciting. That's really awesome. But it is our first time doing a Kickstarter, and we made a few mistakes that we now know how to do better. And uh, we are very excited. If it doesn't happen this time, it will definitely happen the next time. So, but we are very hopeful that it happens this time around, and we'll get all the money that we need. Let's see. Um, how long is the battery life? I covered that just a few seconds ago. Um, it's Tanky an acronym, and uh, what does it stand for? Um, no, it's not an acronym. Tanky actually is uh, named after Tiny Tank. Tiny Tank is a game from the 1990s, um, actually false, the early 2000s. It's a PlayStation game about a tiny tank that's cute and a killing machine. And Tanky is cute and a racing machine. And also, just like the head of Tanky kind of reminds me of a turret of a tank. And the camera pointing upwards and moving back and forth kind of reminds me of, um, you know, the, the gun or the barrel of a tank. So, we named it Tanky. Only later do we realize that it also has a connotation of being like really tough, and Tinky is incredibly tough, so that's good too. Um, how big was the team that built the first prototype? Um, well, the first prototype was built by myself and my wife. Uh, we built it ourselves. We designed everything in AutoCAD, and then we designed all the electronics on the inside. Actually, all the electronics are custom, at least on the, on the inside of the head. So that means like literally designing the little PCB boards and then putting the little chips on the PCB board and reflow soldering it. So baking it. Uh, so we did all that. Um, and um, it takes about, well, it took months to design Tanky, but uh, it takes about 48 hours to build a prototype from the beginning to end because of all of the electronics that we have to do by hand. Uh, so about three days uh, working full time on it. And then the last question was, was the idea for Tanky from one person or team of people? Um, the idea came from just me, uh, myself, but then the implementation of Tanky, so the idea of an X-shaped drone with a head, I came up with that. But uh, the, the implementation of it uh, came from myself, my wife, and Chris, a test pilot, and numerous people who we talked to on the FPV racing circuit and just people flying around and such. Uh, testing Tanky. Uh, so it was a collaborative effort of a bunch of people, uh, mostly, like I said, myself, my wife, and Chris, a test pilot, uh, to build the implementation that you see right here. So, yeah, Tanky is a group effort. Um, 
I hope that's um, that's it. Uh, I hope I answered all of your questions. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to uh, drop us a line at bogdan at tankydrone.com or contact us for our Kickstarter and tell everybody about us. We would love any support we get. Thank you for listening to me and have a great day.